All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to re-enter play mode, and we are going to go to our electrical sparks here, this one. So we can see we have an electrical spark effect. Uh, all of the system's render mode are set to none, and it uses the trails feature. This gives a much better look than a stretched billboard would. It uses collisions and gravity to make the particles bounce and lose some momentum when they hit the ground. Pretty cool, so, and nice and simple, right? So we're gonna do this one next. We're gonna exit play mode. We're going to turn off the menu canvas and select our electrical sparks, lock our secret inspector, and create a new particle system. And this is gonna be sparks two. And we're going to just move this over to the side a little bit, and we'll move this one aside as well. Oh, and as promised, right, let's see, we can see, let's get an angle that allows us to see our sparks bouncing. Let's see. There we go. We can see them bouncing off the ground. Boink, boink, boink. Pretty cool. So we'll look at how to do that as well. Let's, see, let's get a shot that works. Uh, that's pretty good. Move this over a little bit. There we go. All right. So. Sparks 2. Uh, this one is going to have a shorter duration. It's going to be 2. It's going to loop. Not going to pre-warm. Pre uh, the lifetime is going to be random between two constants, and that's going to be between 0.5 and 2. The start size is going to be tiny. It's going to be 0.01. Um, and now everything disappears, right, because the particles are so, so small. We're not actually gonna be rendering the particles at all. We're only gonna be rendering the trails, which is kind of interesting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go straight to the trail renderer and turn it on. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, we've got these lovely lines flying into the air and that we can now see our particles again. Uh, let's dial in the trail settings. Uh, the lifetime is going to be random between two constants and it's gonna be point 0.75 and 0.02, AKA very short, right? And so now let's get a little closer on this guy. F to frame selected. It's kind of hard to get these, get a really good look at these particles. Anyway, okay, that's not bad. We can see it in the two views. Look at them there, so pretty. Okay, the minimum vertex distance is going to be uh, a little bit shorter uh, and that's because we're these trails are actually meshes uh, and the distance between vertexes is going to be sort of how complex they are. And we kind of want them to curve a little bit because they're going to be affected by gravity. So we're going to turn that down um, and give them a few more vertices. Uh, the texture mode is going to be stretch because that's what we want, right? We want these kind of... Um, stretched lines and the trails are going to die with particles, right? The trails are going to stop with the particles. We could turn it off and they would just be continue. No, they don't continue forever. I don't know. Anyway, um, size effects width we can leave on. Um, and the color we actually don't need to mess with because in this case, we're just going to take the color, uh, straight from the material. So, with the trail renderer turned on, in the renderer, it adds a material for the, it adds a slot for the trail material, right? And so we are going to add, just gonna select the material, uh, what is it called, sparks, spark particle. It's, which one is it? Let me just look, spark two particle. <laughs> Or two particle. And so notice, right, this has some color in it. The color is coming from the, so it's got an emiss em emissive map, which is just this little smear here. Um, and it's got some color coming from the HDR color, right? And so if we had bloom in our scene, this is an HDR value, right? It's very bright and it's emissive. So this would give us, uh, these should kind of, we should get bloom off these because they're, it's a, it's a value, a high brightness value, right? Okay. 
And, and that is coming from the material, right? So before we were generating a lot of color in the particle system. Uh, in this case, we're just uh, getting the color from the material. Now, the next thing that we want is to add a little bit of, we want to change the way it's moving. And we're going to do that in the main properties for the particle system under gravity modifier, right? So right now there's zero gravity, we're in space, right? And uh, we are going to add some gravity, uh, which is going to be 0.5, right? So they are going to fly and then be drawn down to earth. The other thing that we're going to do is get rid of this rotation. So we're going to rotate this uh, to the side and we're going to crank up the emission, right? So the emission right now is 10. We're going to turn this up to 50 and get a nice spray going there. Uh, the shape is going to be a cone. Uh, we're going to tweak the angle for it a little bit. It's going to be let's make it about 15. And the radius is going to be tiny. I mean, honestly, it's really effectively a point. But anyway, that's fine. Um, and we're almost there. Uh, one thing that we're going to want to control is the velocity over lifetime. So velocity over lifetime is going to be we're going to is going to allow us to control the velocity of the particles, not just their starting speed. Uh, and so we're going to do this using random between two constants. And this is going to be between two and negative two on the X two and negative two on the Y. And already you can see we're getting this much more interesting kind of randomized spurting behavior. And then we're going to get, uh, we're going to be between three and three on the Z or Z. These look a little different because they're different. Let's try to move them closer so they look more similar. So it looks like I know what I'm doing here. Copying. Uh, the other thing that we're going to use is going to be limit velocity over lifetime. So this is going to allow us to kind of apply some damping to these. So we're going to say the speed can never exceed this is like rotated the wrong way. Hold on, let's see. Uh, oh, I see there was 120 degree rotation along the Y. There we go. That's pretty good. Let's get this so we can see the floor. Okay. But, and then we also need to add Collision, so we can bounce off the floor. So we're going to go to the collision module, activate collision, and we're going to set the, so a couple ways you can do this, right? You can do planes, which is cheaper uh, in terms of um, co computer resources, CPU, I believe. I don't know actually if this is done on CPU or GPU. Uh, probably GPU because it's particles. Anyway, um, planes are just cheaper or you can use the actual uh, world geometry. I'm going to do that because that's the way it was set up in the original system. But actually in this case, we could just use a plane because it's we are actually colliding with the ground, which is basically a plane. So here I've just added plane transform one we're going to go here. Let's just put it under our put it under our guy here. Oh, I turned off my gizmo so long. Let's turn, turn the gizmos back on. Um, let's just oh, this is a child of this. That's why. Let's zero this under it. Woo! That was interesting. Why did this turn? All right, anyway, I'm not going to go too deep into that. I did not rehearse that, and there's something funny happening. Let's lose that and just go back to world space. So you can you can play around with this, but basically you can add custom planes, which will be a little cheaper if you know where things are going to be bouncing. Uh, in this case, we're just going to bounce off the geometry of the floor, and you can see we're getting some nice uh, bounces there. Now, you can also, in the collision section, you can control how much bounce you're going to get. We're going to do random between two constants. This is going to be 0.5 and 1. So we'll have a little bit of variation in our bouncing. And the 
we can choose. We only want it to collide with certain layers that might be useful. Um, and we can also uh, enable it to collide with dynamic colliders. We could lower the um, collision quality. Medium is going to give us static colliders. Low will give us only static colliders. We could go to low here because I'm pretty sure that floor is static. Yeah. That'll probably save us a little bit. Um, and then uh, we can turn on send collision messages, right? So if you wanted to use, if you wanted to send a message every time this uh, bounced off the floor, you can. Um, and there's a callback in the API for that. I forget what it is, but uh, we can look it up in a second. Um, so you could definitely do, I've done some stuff like in another project where I had the player spawned a bunch of particles and if they hit an enemy, the enemy took damage. And I got that working pretty easily using that collision mode, send collision messages um, and having it collide with uh, the world. And it wasn't, I wasn't doing it super often, so it wasn't that costly in terms of performance. So some pretty cool stuff you can do there. Okay, so there you have it. Sorry we ran long, mega long this time. Uh, but hopefully it was interesting and useful content. That is our show for today. Uh, I'm going to hang in the chat for a few more minutes and take some further questions. But thank you so much for joining us and thanks for watching. And I will see you next time.